What up everybody, Daddy Cool. Just a quick update on the VW1915 build. Found a problem, I got a little issue that I gotta take care of. So let's take a little look-see. On when I was doing deck height, a deck height measurement, which is the measurement between the top of the piston and uh, the top of the cylinder. I don't have the heads off, so you're not gonna see it just yet. But I will be making some adjustments, so I'll open it up. Anyhow, there's a measurement called deck height. Ideal deck height per all the VW masters, I guess you'd say, on Samba. Samba.com is a great forum, although some of those guys are super anal and maybe too much of a purist or perfectionist for my taste. Anyhow, they're saying running somewhere between 40 thousandths, 50 thousandths, 60 thousandths, somewhere in there. You don't want to get over, I think, 80 or 90 thousandths. So what I found, uh, found is on bank one and two, so cylinder one, cylinder two, three, four, one and two came in at 79 thousandths, so around 80 thousandths, and on this side, three, four, I had 60 thousandths. That 20 thousandths is enough, apparently, to cause an issue. I did put this together, kind of just thinking, ah, uh, this is my third VW engine build, so I should know better. Shame on me for being... Uh, lazy, I guess you'd call it lazy, but uh, I thought, oh, I'll just run it, I'll see what happens. Well, I was talking to a guru buddy of mine, and he said, don't do that. Just go ahead and shim it up. My whole thing, hang up was, is why I don't want to, increasing deck height will decrease compression. So I thought it might be a, a power difference, but it's not going to be significant enough. So now I have these, let me turn it around here. Yeah. I got these uh, barrel shims, so the next thing I need to do is take off the cylinder head. So I don't know, whatever, there's eight bolts or whatever, so that take this off. Pop this thing off. I'm going to have to slide up the cylinder, and I'll make a video of this, I guess. Uh, slide up the cylinder, pop out the wrist pin, take the cylinder and the piston inside it, put it aside, clean up the base of the cylinder here and the base of the um, case and then slide these guys in. So these are 20,000 spacers. And what's so amazing too is these are paper, paper thin. You wouldn't think this would have any difference on the running of the engine, uh, especially when you consider if you're using any sort of a, sometimes they put paper gaskets here, which are kind of crappy, those disintegrate. Or if you're using any kind of permatex or sealant between the jugs and the um, case, you think you're getting, you gotta be getting at least 10,000 or something with the thickness of that, because this is like, I guess you probably can't see it, but it is like a piece of paper thin. So anyway, we uh, I'll let you know what's going on more with the engine build. I can also do a product opening or a box opening, which cracks me up because my kids are all doing those. I'm like, why do you watch people opening products? I guess I might be doing that now too. But I've got my dual HPMX 40 carbs that just came in. They look beautiful online, but I want to see what they look like in the box. They should really make this thing hum. So stick around. We'll talk more fun stuff. Thanks. Step one is going to be getting these heads off. Then I'm going to slide each barrel up just to the point where I can take out the wrist pin, pop the pin out, and take the cylinder and piston out together. Then I can clean the base down here of the case itself, base of the cylinder, slide those shims on, and with a little sealant, we should be good to go once I torque down the heads. Alright, heads off, I have the deck height measuring tool on here. You gotta bolt this down, you do have to torque it to the proper specs. Um, I torque across slowly, get this thing down flat and level, and then there's this little set screw here. I don't know how well you can see it. Let me see if I can get it in there. Little set screw sitting right here, which protrudes then down uh, below the face of this plate. And what we're gonna measure then is the distance from the bottom of this plate to the top of this screw and that's going to give us our deck. So let me take that off and do a quick measurement and we'll see where we're at. So when you're yanking these wrist pins out of these pistons, I highly recommend a good cheater is one of these. It's literally a paint can opener. And what it allows you to do is get in from the inside, get on the lip of the pin itself and pull it out and it's short enough 
the little tag, I guess you'd call it, that grips is short enough where it's not going to score the inside of where that wrist pin is. So let's see if we can get this works for us. Get, a little, get on the edge there, give it a little tug, and usually you can get them right out. And this has worked well for me for quite a while. There we go. There she comes. Right on out. I think she's going to pop. There we go. And that's it. Like a charm. This next one's going to be a lot easier because now I can come in from this side, tap the pin through, and grab it. So let's get that pin or this uh, piston back up to uh, top dead center. All right, that bad boy's all the way up, top dead center. Now I can do the same. I tap the cylinder on the side a little bit to loosen it up because it is sealed with Permatex. Don't bang down on the fins, they will break. A few taps, back and forth. I should be able to lift this one right out. There we go. And go really slow because if you pull it out and knock those rings off, then you got to reseat it again. Not such a big deal on a new motor because those rings haven't seated, but on a motor that's been run, probably not the best thing. I just. There. So now you can see, give me a little better angle. There we go. Perfect access. Be careful with your sealant. This stuff is rubbery and just fell in, but I was able to grab it. You don't want this crap going in your motor. So now, same thing. I'm going to take out, uh, it's going to be easiest to tap it this way. So let me take out this retaining pin. Hang on to these bad boys too. These things will fly out and go Lord knows where. Half inch. There. Honestly, it might have been easier to go the other way. Let's see if we can do it. Okay, I was able to use a flathead screwdriver and carefully tap around it. This one's off too now. So now, we set this one down and do a little bit of cleanup. We're going to have to clean up the base of those jugs. Because as you're going to see, it's not a lot, but there's a little bit. I don't know well, you can see it. But around this gasket sealing surface, there's a little bit of gray. I'm going to need to pull that off. Luckily, it's rubbery and it just peels right off. I use Permatex Gray. There's a million different sealants and a different <coughs> million different schools of thought. Um, you don't need to use one. There's different ways to do it. And I wouldn't overthink it. Websites like the Samba preach a ton of information. And uh, nine times out of ten you can get yourself drunk reading it. Because uh, it's confusing and it's an awful lot. So once I get this cleaned up, we'll take a look again and uh, reseal these with these barrel shims. All right. Surfaces are clean, barrels cleaned up. I'll try to zoom in a little bit here. If you look at that cylinder on the left, you'll see a gray ring. I laid it on the case itself, actually, as opposed to sticking it on the barrel, because with the barrel pin out, I can't clear it. But this should work just fine. So now I'm going to finagle getting this thing back in here. Hopefully this will be pretty easy. And we'll get it sealed back up. There we go. All right, now I can kind of see from the profile where this pin sits. I think you really got to tap those in, but these have a nice firm slip fit. And now what I'm going to do is get that retaining clip back in there. Can you see it? Get that snap ring back in and then we'll do cylinder number four. 
check this out real quick. I just want to show you how thin of a layer, hopefully you can tell from the video, it is paper thin. You're not trying to fill the Grand Canyon here. You want a thin layer of sealant on both sides of the surfaces. I didn't even put it on the barrel itself. I just did the ring with a paper thin coating because uh, you don't want to goop this stuff up. You don't want this stuff getting in your motor and a little goes a long way. You start putting in a ton, it squirts out all over the place. It's a mess. So this is one case where you don't need to goop it up. Let's go for cylinder number four, same deal. I re the pins. This will hopefully slide on nicely. Let's see how it goes. Uh. And once again, retaining pin or clip, just to be safe. I'm going to jam a rag in here because it does suck fishing the parts out of the motor. So if you're not successful at getting it out, you're effed. There you go. You really got to kind of, once you think you have it in, just loosen a little tension on the clip and slide it. Clockwise and counterclockwise, make sure it's really seated in that groove because these can be hard to see. And that one is in. So we are good. And now slide this one on. And this job is about done. That's it. So now we got our 20 thousandths extra space or deck. That's going to put my total deck at, I think, 79 thousandths. It's going to drop me a couple tenths of a point of compression, which I'm not all that happy about, but rather safe than sorry. I'd rather have a smoother running motor. Maybe kind of rock them a little bit, get that Permatex seated nice, and I'm going to get the head on and torque that down. i got to pull up on my phone that torque sequence. It's a two-cycle sequence. There's a specific tightening order. I don't remember it off the top of my head. So... I'll have to look that one up. And then, the trick here too, is you got to juggle these, uh, you got to get these push rod tubes and push rods back in. I'm going to do a little balancing act there. So I usually stretch them a little back, back open again. You can just rock them back and forth with your thumb a few times. They give you a little bit of a stretch. Kind of get them to sit. I did have to cut these push rods. These were steel. These are chromolys, so I'm going to be running a loose zero, which basically means they're touching and I can spin the rod with my fingers itself. But uh, this is the first time actually custom cutting and fitting rods, push rods and then running steel in a loose zero. So some people don't like them, they claim they're clacky. I don't know, don't have personal experience with it, but we'll see. I don't really mind if it's a clacky motor, if it ends up being better, and it's a hell of a lot easier to do valve adjustments at loose zero than jerking around with the feeler gauges to try to get four thousandths, or whatever it is you like to run. Some people run them a little looser, some people run them a little tighter, I don't know. All right, it's on. Get them all lined up. Those little Viton or rubber seals should be should be able to see them. Make sure it's not too far offset. And you can start to crank that thing down. Oh shit! There we go. That's it. I'm not sure how well this is going to show up. Oh, that's not so bad. All right, top picture is the first torque sequence. Bottom picture is second. Well, that's not good. So on the top one you're going to go to 7 foot-pounds, the bottom one the final 23 foot-pounds. I'd probably do a second one, I'd make a total of three sequences, and I'd probably go 7, then maybe split the difference at about 15, and then follow that final bottom picture for a total of 23. So we'll go ahead and button this thing up right now.
finger tighten them first. They compress quite a bit with those push rod tubes. Seven, seven. There we go. Boom. Next one. Finger tighten them down. I always get a little worried too about if you're going to rip, start ripping studs out and stuff when you start torquing. There we go. There's the next seven. When you start torquing these down to the final values, because it seems like it's kind of tight, and some of these cases are old. As I mentioned, this is not a perfect case. It's kind of a beat up case. But I'm not expecting to get 100,000 miles out of this motor anyway. This is more of a kind of an experiment. It doesn't have top end parts. As I mentioned, double A cylinders, pistons and cylinders. I didn't get Molly. The Molly stuff is top of the line, but it's really expensive. I do have a 2176 build that I'm planning on after this. Because you're always hungry for a little more power. That one has a really nice case. That's number four. And I'm going to use a lot uh, higher end components, I think, on that one. There's five. Six. But this thing is flat. Alright, so now we're going to go to 15. I'm going to use that same sequence. Man, I got to get glasses. Alright. So we'll do the same thing here. And then that final sequence, I'll use the other. Um, diagram which has a little bit different tightening order. 23, final sequence. So let me get it up to 23. Some people go a little tighter. I'm not running crazy compression or anything, so I'm not doing that. All right, one. It's going to go a little crazy. I think I'm going to break something. One, two. Hold, if you're using an extension, hold this as perpendicular as possible because you don't want to mess up those torque values. It's easy to do. If you start kind of twisting or getting off balance a little like this, not good. You want to be straight in. And if you can avoid extensions, that's probably better. And then after uh, I get them all done, I check them one more time. And then there's some folks that will let these things sit overnight and then retorque them again. I don't know if stuff really stretches that much. I did check them the next day and nothing had changed. It's five, six, but it probably wouldn't, probably wouldn't hurt. Seven, eight. I was waiting here some kind of pop or snap. There's eight. So I'll hit it one more time. One. It did move. Two. Boom. That's it. She's done. All right. Now I gotta get the rockers back on. I'm gonna set the valves back to lose zero. I won't bore you with that. Open 20,000s didn't mess up rocker geometry. That's a whole fun task if you haven't done that one yet. I've spent, I'm not a master at it, so you spend a lot of time trying to get it to look right and there's tips and tools and tricks and you got to hook up uh, micrometers or dial gauges I should say and you're measuring uh, half lift and then you got to kind of take a look with some square angles to make sure that you're lined up good but that's probably a whole other video. Alright, be back.